Yes, lot of random points and I'm really so very excited. Welcome, welcome to our first RW Summit. I see my friends, thank you so much for your support from the bottom of my heart. Maraming maraming salamat po. First and foremost, I want to thank Ate Marisa, the one who offered the hall for free. Thank you. Palapakan naman natin ang pag-sponsor ng Talayok. And of course, my friends, thank you, for, thank you for the support. Hindi naman ito magkakatotoo kung wala kayo. So thank you for allowing me to speak in front of you. I hope and I pray na sana ma-bless kayo ngayon. I am sure na uulalik kayo ng biyaya at pagpapala. financial management, pagpupo ng mga pangarap nila, at ngayon isi-share ko sa inyo lahat-lahat ng mga natutunan ko. This is our first ever OMW Summit. Would you chug it up? Yeah. <laughs> Ayun. Yun yung knowledge ko lang makapakalimutan ko. We have guests from Dubai. Kagagaling lang ng airport. Thank you. Babalik din siya mamaya. Para lang talaga sa summit. So, okay. Are you ready? Tell yourself, I'm ready. story lang. Ano ba to? Ano ba yan? <laughs> Ayun, my story. So, I want to introduce myself. I was born and raised in Talana, Isabela. It's a far flung area, the base of Sierra Madre Northern Park. Sierra Madre sa bundok mismo. First hand, I observed and witnessed poverty. Yung walang makain, yung walang wala talaga sa buhay. And I despised poverty. I hated it. And, uh, but I didn't question my parents because they worked hard para mapaaral kami, para maging okay kami. And then, after 10 years of uh, staying in Talana, Isabela, walang technology doon, wala rin connection ng daan. So, pupunta ng true boat o okay, airplane. So, um, January 30, 2000, January 30, 1989, around 11 or 10 p.m., my mom started to experience uh, severe labor pains nung pinanganak niya ako. Since nasa barrio kami, walang wedding, walang health center. So ang plano nila is, nalitilig mama ko sa bayan. So in, in around two hours, magka-travel sila through boat. Ayun, maliit na bangka ang sinakyan nila. Papunta sa bayan para mga anak si mama doon. But, and after 70% of travel, after 130 minutes, sa mismo in the middle of a virgin forest on a small boat, I was delivering. Pinanganap ko ako sa ilo, sa bangka, na may dala lang silang lampara. You know, at the start of my life, for me, that's already a struggle, di ba? You know, being born doon sa siguro sobrang ginaw, siguro may mga possible may mga insect doon because they still need to walk for 20 minutes para makarating sa pinakamalapit na bahay para maayos whatsoever. For me, when I heard that story, I told myself, I'm a survivor. You know, I thrive 
in the first few seconds of my life, may challenge na, may problema na, pero nabuhay ako. And I actually held that in my heart as a big lesson for me to go on in my life. After that, we moved to Tugigaraw, and then um, my mother worked as a nanny, yan, housemaid, katulong ko si mama. Papa ko worked as a construction worker. And then, kami magkakapatid lahat, we really embrace education. We love to study. Hindi ganun makalino, pero we really love to study. Lahat kami magkakapatid. And then after I finish, I finish and survive my high school years because um, I worked also sa isang farm ng governor, taga-pastol po ako ng sheep. So yun ang trabaho ko every weekend and every summer para may allowance ako ng high school ko. Again, I despise it. I hated it. Pag sinasabi ng papa ko, uh, Diane, are you okay? Yung camera okay na? <laughs> Pag sinasabi ng papa ko, punta na tayo sa farm! Ganyan. Talaga yun, mamaktol kami magkapatid. But then, sabi ko, wala akong choice, I need to face this. Fast forward, I entered in my college. Um, gusto kong gusto, gusto kong mag-aral ng nursing that time, pero hindi ko lang kung paano, because hindi kaya ng parents ko. But then I told myself, siguro mayroong blessings na darating sa akin. After two years of being a consistent dean solicitor, the, the university day school awarded a full scholarship to me. Nag-aaral ako natapos ko ang second, third, fourth year ng nursing ko for free, walang contribution na binabayaran. And that's for me the first, the biggest blessing that I received. I studied for free ng nursing ko. And then I worked as a clinical instructor for three years. After that, um, I tried to apply overseas. Ito na! Gusto ko na maging OFW. Siyempre! Nag-apply ako agad sa Saudi Arabia bilang isang instructor kasi hindi ako marunong sa hospital eh. Marunong lang ako magsalita sa harap. That time, dalawa ko yung magkaibigan. Sobrang excited namin. And during that time also, ang dami kong kailangang bayaran po ta. For me, that's the pinaka-lowest moment of my life. I hit rock bottom. Ang dami kong utang. Sobrang stress ako sa buhay. I mean, feel so stuck. In parang, I even had the suicidal ideation. I even left God. Hindi na ako nagdasal kasi yung pinagdarasal ko na makapunta ako ng Saudi after two, three months of praying, hindi dumating yung visa. Even if I already qualified. Yung offer nila sa Saudi Arabia is around 80,000 pesos. My gosh, isang sahuran lang. Parang bayad ko na lahat ng utang ko. So I hope, sabi ko, Lord, thank you, makakapunta na ako ng Saudi Arabia. Sobrang hopeful ako nun. After waiting and waiting and waiting, tinawagan ng kaibigan ko para i-process yung visa niya kasi in two weeks na makakaalis na siya. Sumama ako sa kanya. Then I asked the agency, sabi ko, pero na pong visa yung kaibigan ko, how about me? Tapos nung nireview nila yung record, sabi sa akin, Medyo nawawala daw yung record mo sa HAE University yung pangalan. So sabi sa akin, maghintay lang tayo. Okay, that time, I hit rock bottom, I'm so stressed. And then, nandun kami sa agency, nakikita ko yung kaibigan ko. They are able, they are okay, may pera sila. Pero siya yung pinalis ni Lord. I really hated my life that time. And I despised again that experience. Habang tinitignan ko yung kaibigan ko, signing the papers, getting the tickets, naiiyak ako sa gilid. Sabi ko, Lord, ako ang may kailangan. Mayaman yung kaibigan ko, bakit siya yung pinalis mo? That day, naglalakad ako sa market market, nakita ko ng converges. Sabi nila, baka gusto mag-apply ng call center agent. Eh, syempre, di ba? Sige, go na. Kahit ano nila, basta may trabaho ako. Then I worked as a call center agent for around one year, one and a half year. Pero that time, yung first month ko, hindi na ako nagdasal, hindi na ako nagsimba. Sabi ko, Lord, hindi ka totoo. Kasi kung totoo ka, hindi sana napaalis ako. Alam mo, ang hirap ng buhay ko, pero wala ka nung, dat, wala ka nung time na yun. Lahat na ginawa ko ng prayer, pero hindi pa rin yung binigay. So I left, I abandoned ka. Every day, pumapasok ako sa Makati sa trabaho ko. 4 a.m., 3 a.m., naglalakad ako sa Ayala. I don't care kung may mag-hold up, kung may bumalil sa akin. I'm so, you know, self-destructive talaga ako that time. And then, yung boss ko sa call center, sabi niya sa akin, pag-attend tayo ng prayer meeting. Pag narinig ko yung prayer meeting, nandibili ako. Prayer meeting, kalokohan. And then, lagi na ako tinatawag. Sabi niya, mag-attend tayo ng ganun sa Makinasal. Sabi ko, ha, oh, Makinasal? Oh. Sumama ako sa Manginasal, pero bago tayo mag-Manginasal, mag-attend tayo ng prayer meeting. Eh, gutom na ako that time. Eh, kasi kaya sasama ako. And then, I attended the feast of Brother Bo Sanchez. And that day, I experienced healing. Nag, uh, as in, alam mo yung feeling na thousands of people lang nandun, pero feel ko ako lang yung kinakausap ng preacher. Yung mga umalis dyan, hinalimutan ang pangalino, there's a perfect time for you, yung mga preaching na. And that time, 
Umiya ako ng sobra sobra and thinking like I was alone in PICC. And then I had the hope again. I started praying, worshiping. I had like served na ako. And then dumating na yung opportunity to apply. Ayun sa Oman. Nag-apply ako sa Oman. Walang Averian. Napaka-smooth. Lahat napaka-smooth. Within two to three months, I left the Philippines and pumunta ako dito sa Oman. And later on, you will know what happened here in Oman. Why God closed that door for Saudi Arabia and brought me here in Oman. The real fact that I am standing here in front of you is God actually picked me to be here in Oman, to have fellowship with each and every one of you, to touch lives of many people and to do great works of God. That I believe you also can 